A couple of years ago, some coked up Hollywood executive got the crazy idea to pitch a Ben-Hur remake for $100 million. Needless to say, it flopped hard as anyone would expect. I've had all sorts of theories as to why we often get mega budget flops from the thought that the Hollywood suits really are that out of touch with what the public wants, to flops being necessary for tax return reasons, to some films being remade for the sake of holding on to certain rights. Whatever the reason, a $100 million uninspired remake of a classic, doomed to failure from day one, saddens me because the studio could have got $100 million they made off a tentpole movie, designed solely to make money to fund, say, 4 $25 million films, 10 $10 million films, or even $101 million films. The big studios have the power to greenlight a project with a click of a finger to make a young, hungry director prove himself to the world, or for a veteran to be able to make his long-time passion project. Undoubtedly, many poor films with low returns can easily be made from taking such risks, but who's to say a surprise hit like Halloween or the Blair Witch Project wouldn't emerge, if the filmmakers were just given the chance? It seems a fair investment, spreading the cost of $100 million over several films, some which might flop and others which might not, or some made to pocket a bit of cash and others made purely for critical acclaim, for the director's vision, than to put all your eggs in one basket with a $100 million picture. These kind of mid-budget movies, specifically mid-budget dramas, made for around $5 million to $50 million, seem to be disappearing fast. So what kind of films am I talking about first and foremost? Well, I'm mainly talking about the filmographies of directors such as David Cronenberg, David Lynch, Francis Ford Coppola, Brian De Palma, Barry Levinson, Spike Lee, John Waters, and Walter Hill in the prime. You may have noticed that a fair few of the names mentioned, these authors, these men with voices and stories to tell, made their names during the Hollywood new wave of the late 60s and early 70s, where power shifted from tight-fisted studios to creative young filmmakers, a movement which was ended by the 1980s Heaven's Gate. Today we are very much back into the studio dominant world of filmmaking in Hollywood, with companies like Disney having a terrifying hold of an incredible amount of properties. In fact, it seems often people go to the cinema today to see a movie because it's associated with a certain studio like Marvel, Pixar, Disney, DC etc. as opposed to the actual directors. Of course, big names such as Tarantino and Nolan are still major draws and can seemingly have any project pushed forward because of both their creativity but mainly their bankability. I mean, it's nothing new of course. Prove that you're a filmmaker who can make money and you'll have your project greenlit. It's something that actors and directors themselves have commented on plenty of times. Matt Damon, for example, believes mid-budget movies no longer exist, and John Turturro has praised television for being the creative outlet for those frustrated by the movies of Hollywood. A lot of the mid-budget directors of old have retired. Others like Levinson have moved on to TV, which has grown massively since the turn of the century, with the likes of HBO blurring the lines between TV and film quality productions. There are some special cases of directors who have neither retired nor been pushed out to TV, such as Martin Scorsese, who has instead constantly adapted to the ever-changing demands required to get projects off the ground. He has teamed up, for example, with Leonardo DiCaprio for several projects since 2003, and the duo's movies remain the only ones of his in the new century that have been financial successes, with films like his passion project Silence literally taking decades to be made and when it was, it vanished like a fart in the wind. His latest film, The Irishman, will be released on the streaming service Netflix, who, like Amazon and like television, are another outlet for filmmakers looking to get movies made on their terms. At one time, it would be considered laughable that a Scorsese picture starring Robert De Niro and Al Pacino would not be picked up by a film studio, but we are now living in such a time. And you might say, well, hang on, the Irishman has a crazy budget of almost $200 million, but you have to remember the original forecast was for around $100 million, closer to films like The Insider. It's a real shame for film fans that the model changed over the years. I don't mind these massive films, these superhero flicks and reboots, but it seems there's a monopoly and a lack of variety when it comes to mainstream cinema. 
Whether you want to blame the studio's greed for wanting to make a billion dollars off a single film and not settling for smaller profits, hence the influx of cinematic universes and movies designed to appeal to everyone imaginable from all countries, incorporating tried and tested story formulas, PG-13 age ratings, political correctness, risk-free plots etc, and thus lacking any sort of individualism or creativity. Whether you feel the talent pool has dried up and it's harder for studios to find good directors they can trust now that seemingly anyone and everyone can make a film, or whether it's because of the massive recession, the mid-budget movies, on a grand scale, have gone. There are still mid-budget dramas being made of course, but those mid-budgets have become ultra-low budgets. And even when the films are made, how do audiences see them? When I go to the cinema for example, I don't exactly feel spoiled for choice when I have a choice between the latest Star Wars, Jurassic World or superhero movie and find myself scratching my head when I'm told, sorry sir, we aren't showing silence or the lobster. I'm not blaming the cinemas because their fights against the big studios is a whole story in of itself, but it's no wonder that many film fans turn to piracy since they're unable to see the films they want to see in cinema, and thus actually contribute to the cycle which often ends with creative, mid-budget movies losing money giving studios a chance to tighten their grips on their wallets and say, I told you so, now let's make another Transformers movie. I guess the main issue, as it usually is, comes down to money. Many of the stories for mid-budget films are risky and they require a respectable amount of cash to be made. Their financial success is not guaranteed, and even if they are a hit, they won't make as much money as the superhero film next to it, or the franchise film. So why not just make a superhero film instead? This is the thought process I guess Hollywood people have. Would they greenlight a movie like Boogie Nights or LA Confidential today if the films were made in exactly the same way? I'm not so sure. And yet those films actually coexisted alongside the likes of Star Wars and Jurassic Park. There are other issues that many people have with modern day Hollywood that I think are all linked with this problem of studios only financing ultra high budget cash cows or ultra low budget Oscar baits. Many people are turned off by what they see as forced political correctness for example with movies like Ocean's 8 or Ghostbusters going as far as to remake classic movies with all female casts. But let's be honest, do you really think Hollywood, the land of pedos and rapists, care about women's rights in the workplace and the representation of Asians in cinema? They just want PR points, which in turn shoves extra bums in cinema seats, which of course generates more money. Of course, as stated, exceptions to the rule do exist. As stated, critical darlings like Nolan and Tarantino provide a breath of fresh air in a world dominated by capes and spandex. And movies like David Finch's Gone Girl and Shane Black's The Nice Guys eventually did make small profits whilst the budgets did not compromise the director's vision. Other movies that made it through the pitching stage were War Dogs, La La Land and Sully, all made from around $20 million to $60 million. There are studios like Disney who finance $250 million movies. There are studios like Blumhouse who specialize in micro-budget horror. I just wish there was someone who could lend out a hand and say to a director, here, here's $30 million, go and make a great film. A studio that caught my eye when they attempted unsuccessfully to finance The Irishman were STX Entertainment. And mid-budget, adult-orientated movies are precisely their mission statement. Current notable outputs of theirs consist of The Foreigner, Molly's Game and Free State of Jones. Not bad for a company founded in 2014 and I hope they continue to fund medium sized projects. But we're still a far cry from the 70s and 80s though. It's a frustrating time when guys like Steven Soderbergh exist and are alive and well but can't get a decent budgeted film made. When creatively void men like Colin Trevorrow and Zack Snyder are sitting on top of $200 million pictures. Francis Ford Coppola, whose three most recent films were self-financed experimental pictures said, You try to go to a producer today and say you want to make a film that hasn't been made before. They will throw you out because they want the same film that works, that makes money. They tell me that although the cinema in the next 100 years is going to change a lot, it will slow down because they don't want you to risk anymore. Soderbergh highlighted that the men behind the financing are no longer film fans when he said, 
There are fewer and fewer executives who are in the business because they love movies. There are fewer and fewer executives that know movies. You've got people who don't know movies and don't watch movies for pleasure deciding what movie you're going to be allowed to make. I think director Susan Seidelman summed it up best when she said, To studios now, to make a million dollars isn't a big deal. You have to make a billion dollars. They have to appeal to every demographic in every part of the world. So to make a 20 million dollar movie that makes 60 million, why put their money there? I guess, really, that's all it comes down to in the end, money. Mid-budget cinema is in my opinion the heart and soul of Hollywood filmmaking, but it's no longer even considered, let alone the priority. With the rise of TV and streaming, the ever-ballooning budgets of tentpole movies, who knows what the future of Hollywood looks like. Sometimes I secretly hope for the implosion that Steven Spielberg once predicted, so we get a fresh start, a purge. And once again the creative and artistic filmmakers triumph. Thanks for watching.